Welcome to this Killick Explains Finance video. This week, as US reporting season rolls by, I'm going to look at a key question for investors. How do you know when a profit number reported by a firm, particularly one that's under a little bit of pressure, is suspect? I'm going to look at just three ways you can maybe take away the idea that, hmm, I need to do some more work, I'm not entirely comfortable with the number the directors want me to focus on. Now, what's being said? Well, lots of things right now, but The Economist hit the nail on the head. They said this quarterly reporting season has become a carnival of confusion for investors. And the reason for that is there are so many different ways to describe profit for the year as a company. Now, it's bad enough if the company sticks to the rules and regulations and the law and just reports the numbers it's supposed to, which are these. So a basic profit statement for a UK company could include at least four different measures of profit. There's gross profit, there's operating profit after overheads, there's profit before tax after finance costs, and there's profit for the year at the bottom. And if you look at my very simple example here, and I have simplified, you'll notice that the gross profit is positive and large. The operating profit after overheads is quite a bit smaller. The profit before tax is zero. And if you knock off tax, you end up with a negative number. So what on earth are you supposed to make of those? Which one is the most reliable? Now, a lot of analysts will start with the operating profit number as it happens. But you can see the problem. Terry Smith, famous city investor, prefers gross profit in a lot of cases. So even when the company is just sticking to reporting what it's supposed to, you've already got at least four choices. Now, I'm actually not dealing with that issue directly here. I deal with it in other videos. I'm dealing with companies saying, actually, we don't like any of those. We want investors to focus on our own version of profit. And these come under lots of different names. None of them are required to be prepared by law. So this is the director saying, we're not happy with the way the law does it. We want to do it our own way. Pre-exceptional is one example. Headline, trading, I've seen all of these. Special profit, underlying. Okay, these are terms the directors have essentially made up because they want to present a picture and they don't want to do it within the existing framework exactly. And there's nothing to stop a company, by the way, doing the minimum required by the law and then adding its own version as an extra. And the question then becomes, well, can you trust the number put in front of you? I'm going to suggest just three reasonably quick tests, and if a company fails all three, warning light should start to sound or go off. Test one, the number the firm's put in front of you, its preferred profit figure, if you like, is that miles away from the statutory reported profit it has to report? On average in the US, that gap is around 20% at the moment, all right? So just be aware that there can be quite a big gap between the two, and if there is, all right, you need to do a bit more homework. You may not be able to trust the company director's favorite number. Test two, compare the firm's adjusted profit, I've called it, whatever they call it, their favorite number, to free cash flow. That's the operating cash flow they have to report in the cash flow statement, adjusted for the minimum capital expenditure required to maintain the business. Again, a big gap is just gonna make you think, well, hang on a minute, can I trust the profit number? Is it being backed by underlying cash generation from the same management team? And test number three is when you see an adjusted profit number, I've called it that, could be any of those others, a headline, underlying, special, whatever they call it, a big number there and low tax payments. Because could it be, could it be, that what's happening here is the directors want to present a high profit number to investors, but the people who do the tax calculation, HMRC, are saying actually, we think the profit for the year is a lot lower, and that brings down the tax payment. That again, has got to be a little bit suspect. So if you get all three together, then certainly you want to be asking some questions and not just going, yes, well, I trust this number. Now, I've covered a lot of ground there and taken a lot for granted. Any questions, editor at killick.com. And if you're thinking, oh, I need to know more and then come back to this video, please see our comprehensive library of videos at killickexplains.com. And in particular, click on the financial statements tab.